hey what's up guys today in this video i'm going to talk about a neat trick which you can use to populate a lot of meaningful information in your database so we have already seen how we can use cedar along with the faker library to generate a lot of random data but then in here we are dealing with quiz questions and i wanted to have something which is meaningful enough so that i can run different kinds of tests and check my code against them so what i typically do is i create this hard-coded json data which i'm exporting as quiz sample data you can see this constant is basically an array of i sample data this i sample data is defined over here it has quiz title which is of type string description which is string it has questions which is an array of i question data and the i question data is defined over here which is it has a question of type string options again an array and i have saved some interface typing here by directly saying that this is of type i mean it has two properties one is text of type string and is correct of type boolean Okay, both works. Uh, there is nothing wrong. I could have extracted this into an interface similar to this as well. But yeah, this works. Okay, now we have two quizzes. So as you can see, I have this one quiz, which is Laravel beginner level quiz. And the second one is ReactJS beginner level quiz. Inside here, I have this title, description, then questions. The first quiz has two questions. This is my first question and then the second question. The first question has four options. The second question has two and I have also defined which option is correct. This is a MCQ type question. Similarly, in the second quiz, if we go down, we have title, description, a question with four options. Obviously, these options are not React based, but this is hard coded data. We, I will populate the meaningful information later on. Anyways, that is not part of the video. Okay, and one more change which I have done inside my package.json which I wanted to show you before we start is this db refresh. This db refresh command I have added which basically what it does is it runs npm run type orm cli schema drop. What schema drop does is it deletes the entire table list from the database. Okay, it doesn't delete the database as such but it deletes all the tables. Then it runs the migration, so we recreate all our tables and then we run our seed. What this helps us to do is, at some point, if you want to clean up everything and start afresh, this command is there. But obviously, this is something which you should not um, keep in your production. You will never run them, uh, I'm assuming. So yeah, that's fine. Development-wise, this does save a lot of time. Okay, so everything is here for us to now create a new seeder let's call that setup data seeds by the way the quiz data is inside the database data folder don't keep it inside the seeders or the migrations because type orm will type uh, try to uh, scan everything in there and look at the type of classes and it may fail okay i tried that and it was failing so i am sharing that information with you now this is a cedar so we need to export this which implements the cedar from type worm okay now because this implements cedar we will get an error that we need to implement this function which is this okay so far so good we need to return something obviously um console.log maybe okay and this is public async like that okay and over here i will console the quiz sample so that we can ensure that the data is coming like this and then let's run our seed so this is done and i can see my data over here console data right so this is good uh, you can see that the first quiz has, so let me expand it a bit. The first quiz has two questions and the second one has one only. Okay, so far so good. Let's just write a for loop and first start creating the content. 
So what are we doing over here? We are looping through all the quiz sample data, which basically right now is all the quizzes, right? So this is one, this is two. So this level, we are looping it inside here. We can directly create our quiz. So the quiz title is quiz sample data. I quiz title and then quiz sample data. I quiz description. This is fine. Um, what I can obviously do is maybe so I'll destructure them so that it becomes a little easier readability wise. And we so we created the quiz over here. Now, the next thing is we already have the question. So we need a second loop for the questions. But before that, I want to show you one more thing. So now. If you see in the user seed, we already have a truncate because we want to delete and then recreate. Otherwise, every time I try to create, I mean, I run the DB seed, it will try to create this user and we will fail because it has a unique index. So over here, we are going to face the same problem. Okay, let me open up this and steal a little bit of code from here first. Okay, the get manager is from type ORM. So we are getting that instance. We are running a query, which is quizzes. This is fine, but it will give us an error. Can you see it says cannot truncate a table referenced in a foreign key constraint. And this is something which you will definitely face because we are referencing other entities. And how do we fix that? So for that, what we will do is there's something called set set foreign key checks to zero. This will mean it is not going to check for the um, foreign key constraints and it will allow you to delete or rather truncate the table which is what we want, right? So now if I run. Okay, now it says, I think I made a mistake, right? Yes, the C is missing. Sorry about that. Let's run it once more. All right, now this works. So we know we have quizzes, questions, and options so why don't we add all of them and we have already created the quizzes let's go to chrome where my swagger api is running and let's see try it out we'll get the token token doesn't match why okay i know what is the problem this is happening because basically in our previous video, I added this middleware, right? So let me for now comment this out. Right. I should have changed the um, message a little bit. Okay. So path, I can put it to all and maybe now it should work because I'm hard coding it to only one path. No, it's still doing the same thing, is it? Oh, I know why. I did a start and not dev. So the new changes will not reflect in the code. The Swagger API which I was running, right? It was not watching for the changes. Right now I have done that. And now I will get the token. So let's quickly add that. Come over here. Quiz ID right authorize now my thing is in place and i can see that the quiz is coming but the questions are not here as as of now so let's work on that we have quiz okay i do this and now i'll create the question So I'll get the question over here and then I'll also attach the quiz. Okay, so this is done. Let's go back to our terminal and execute the seed run. And if I now request for the quiz, it also gives me the questions, which is improvement. 
the only change which I would like to do is take this over here, restructure the question and the options and just put this here. So we have quiz, question, let's add and now we will have the third loop which is for the options. Now I can do like this, which is you know the k factor to it, or I can directly destructure things. And with this, I'm saving the option as well. So if everything is correct, ideally now we should be able to see the entire data. Let's go to Swagger. And yes, we do. So let me look at this. So we have our first question. Okay, this is option one, option two, option three, option four. That's correct. And then we have our second question. What is the role of the service provider? Option one, option two, and everything is here. If I want, I can even change and look at the second quiz, which has the React quiz with the Laravel options. So yeah that's about it guys that's how you can quite easily use some hard-coded data right which i showed you over here easily to import in the database and continue your development with this kind of a database i mean data right it will be very easy for me to write the code and test stuff and you may have you know over the development cycle got some sample data which you feel you need to test your application against and hence you can always you know hard code them and keep things in place so yeah that's about it guys if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel